Hi there, this is Brett Hofstadt coming to you from my backyard in Northern California where we need to talk about four major changes with the 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act that just went into law last week because it is going to create major changes in our country over the next five years with drones. So the first thing is that it provided funding for the FAA for the next five years. Up till this point, it seems like for a long time now they've been working with continuing resolutions and extensions to their budget. It caused a lot of churning and burning with their efforts, uh, with little ability to plan ahead, build a sustainable long-term plan. So now they can do that uh, for everything, but especially for drones. So that's great for all of us, and especially for people in the FAA now. All right, the second thing is that this bill removed the exemption for 336 flyers, which means hobby and recreational pilots and flyers. Now this applies not just to drones, but to the uh, traditional and historic radio control aircraft pilots, which are a big segment of our country. I was one of them myself, still am sometimes. Uh, big part of our culture here in the country but this new law recognizes that drones are not toys they are aircraft and they are able to interact and uh, sometimes threaten aircraft in our national airspace that have people on them so there this one change is going to create a lot of changes in our country something we should expect is creation of some remote ID system so that you can track and monitor and identify every aircraft that flies with or without a person on it, similar to transponders or ADSB on aircraft now, manned aircraft. There will probably be some kind of certification and registration process for every aircraft, whether it's a drone or a fixed wing RC aircraft. So this will be big changes and I think they're needed because now we can build a framework that works for everybody. And for those who worry about the STEM education or you know, recreational impact, I think ultimately this will be good because it will help everyone be safe and secure. And for people who want to promote these programs or develop them for kids, for schools, uh, it will take an investment, but I think it will show that we need that investment to be serious and to create a pathway for people. All right, third thing that is big for this new 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act is that it expands the LANCE program. LANCE is L-A-A-N-C or the Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. Now what happens with this 2018 law is really revolutionary and exciting. LANCE provided essentially an API for companies to interact with the FAA approval process to fly in controlled airspace such as near airports, and a few companies got this approval and system at first. In the 2018 law, it's expanded into I think, twice the number of companies, a lot of them. There's uh, over 10 now, I, I believe, maybe 12. But what the FAA has done is essentially create this API for its regulatory approvals. So now these approvals can move at the speed of business, not at the speed of bureaucracy. It's a huge change. It can happen in minutes now instead of waiting for weeks, sometimes months, for approvals to fly in controlled airspace. Just totally unacceptable for business, right? So what this shows is that this could be a future framework that can evolve and mature for a more complete UTM or unmanned traffic management system. And so that's exciting. So in the next five years, uh, we can see a dramatic shift into a, a private cooperative effort and capability for drones in our airspace. Fourth and final major change from this law is it gives government entities permission to take counter drone efforts or ac actions, which means to shoot down or disrupt drones. Until this law passed, that was illegal for everybody, including government entities, because drones were classified the same as passenger aircraft or commercial airliners. So let's say you were someone in your backyard trying to pick off a drone with a BB gun because you thought it was spying on you, or you wanted to uh, protect your site, a critical infrastructure site from a drone somehow. That was treated the same as trying to hijack an airliner, which is a federal offense. 
and even companies who wanted to develop these technologies to counteract or disrupt drones, they couldn't advertise or talk about the capabilities they were working on because even that was a federal offense because they were essentially advocating for the hijacking of aircraft under the law, even though, understand, they were talking about drones. But now this new law in 2018 makes that distinction, and so you will see a huge explosion now in counter-drone efforts in the, over the next five years, and that's a great thing because we do need to think about the security and safety with drones that are doing bad things. So these are four major changes from the 2018 FAA Reauthorization Act. In the past two years, we've seen major changes because Part 107 laws went into effect, but we haven't seen anything yet. It's going to be huge changes over the next five years. So if you want to be a part of that, you need to get busy now, get productive, and I'll tell you that a lot of people who have these programs in their companies have been taking advantage of my book here, Success with Drones in Civil Engineering. It is a guidebook with a lot of how-to of success cases, lessons learned, and a lot of additional resources, the same ones that I use to stay informed, and there's even some discounts and deals that expire at the end of 2018. So you want to take advantage of those while you can, because the next five years are going to be major, ch going to have major changes in our country with drones. It's very exciting, so I hope you take advantage of it. If you have any questions, want to get in touch, find me here, look for me on social media or on LinkedIn, and I'll be glad to see your progress in the years ahead too. Thanks for watching, take care, and take charge.